5am at the Beckerings Park Estate. A stone's throw from Woburn, it's an area steeped in history and full of wildlife. But we aren't here to see the sights. We're out with Paul Childerley, guiding Viking Arms finest Bob MacArthur into his first Chinese water deer. This is no everyday stalk either. This is Paul's last day of guided stalk in this season. He's keen to grass a couple more water deer to keep his population at an acceptable level throughout the closed season. There's no time to waste, we head out into the field. Paul has selected an early vantage point and we get there before it's light. We've picked the foggiest morning of the year to go stalking on but Bob's not deterred, glassing away with his Swarovski yells. Before long the unmistakable form of a Chinese water deer emerges from the hedge line. We've been here less than half an hour and we're already in luck. But the fog puts paid to our efforts. With visibility so obscured it's impossible to take on a safe, ethical shot. Despite the deer being at the base of a hill, the shot is still not on because of the poor visibility. The fog was thick as you, as you, you, know, you see on camera. Just getting so close to them and then you know, them just disappearing in, into, the, uh, you know, into the mist. It's, it's, it, it was quite, a, you know, quite exciting. I'd say we saw what maybe 12, 14, quite phenomenal. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not used to seeing so many deer out in, uh, you know, out in arable, uh, out in arable land. The wait goes on, but the fog doesn't appear to be lifting any time soon. On any other day, this would have been the perfect location, but that's stalking for you. We decide to head back to base and bide our time. Two hours later we venture out once more and conditions are a lot better. Paul knows his ground well and takes Bob to a spot where deer have regularly been sighted in the open. This is completely open ground with only the rolling landscape for cover. A slow single file stalk is the only way forward, but it pays off as we spot what might be a deer just beyond an incline. It's a deer alright lying out in full view. There's a clear backstop and all we need is a deer okay, to stand up now. Okay. We stand. Okay. Our quarry takes its time but eventually presents the perfect angle. Well done, Bob. Thank Good you. Very, thank you very much. Good. Sir. Congratulations, first Chinese. Yeah, it was indeed fantastic. I forgot she went there. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good. Great. Right, let's go and uh, have a look. Okay, smash it. A lot of hair come out of it, haven't it? We approach the fallen beast to confirm death and inspect the carcass. It's a doe and perfect for Paul's cool plan. Good stuff. Younger doe. Uh, last year's born, so. Just come up to a year old, end of May. You know, yeah. we don't get them up in North Yorkshire, and they, uh, you know, to, for that, to, you know, to see yeah. it, it's quite, yeah. you know, quite interesting. Quite unusual, it's like stalking it, really. You know, yeah, it how, is. How yeah, they, yeah. How they react, yeah. and how you yeah. have to use a contour rather than trees and bushes. No, no, indeed, yeah. Yeah, I was impressed with the um, the bolt on. It's interesting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Can well, you, can you explain a little bit more about it? It's the Merkel RX Helix. Yeah. It's a straight pull rifle. So you just pull the bolt back. And it's as quick as that. You yeah. cycle another round, and what happens? It's on a helix system. On the last push of the bolt, the okay. bolt engages into six lugs, and yeah. it twists in. Really? That's the name helix. Yeah. And then on the pull back, for every inch of the bolt handle move, yeah. the actual bolt comes back two inches. It has a very interchangeable barrel. In yeah. fact, all you need to do is just take the fore end off. There's, yeah. a, there's a lever underneath. You undo the lever. Barrel comes out with the bolt. Stick another caliber in. Yeah. It looks, it looks like it does a job. <laughs> it looks like it does. Right, Fantastic. we'll carry this, carry this from back and then we'll, um, we'll just have a quick look for that one on top of the hill. If that's, that's perfect. Yeah. That'll do, mate. Great stuff. Marvellous. After the initial blank, Bob has finally got his first Chinese water deer on the ground. Yeah, it was a lot easier. We had a lot more visibility. Visibility was very good, actually. And uh, yeah, they, they uh, you know, we saw quite a few. And obviously, we shot one as well, so it's a, a bonus. But we're not done yet. There are several deer lying out in a freshly drilled field right by our current location. We can't resist a quick recce. There's no doubt about it, this is a promising location. We head out into the middle of the field and immediately we spot a buck that looks like an ideal taker. Bob readies the rifle, but this buck seems to know what's up and offers everything but a good shot. 
First, it refuses to get up, then agonisingly stands at the wrong angle. Paul tries a whistle to get its attention, but all too soon, the opportunity is gone. That's the exciting thing about stalking, you know? You're on stand, you're in the aiming position, it's who can wait the longest. And unfortunately, we waited a little bit long, and they, uh, the book was up straight off and, and away from us. But, you know, it could have gone either way, but it was very exciting. And of course, you, anticipation is a fantastic thing. Bob heads for home, having put one deer in the larder. But there's no rest for Paul. In the afternoon, he takes Ely's Thomas Atienza out, hoping to get him a first water deer too. Novice stalker Thomas first takes a range test to prove his worth behind the rifle and get familiar with the Merkel Helix. In there. Yeah, perfect. With the practice shots finding their mark perfectly, we waste no time heading out onto the estate, where Paul has earmarked a doe as a good one for Thomas to take. It's lying out in a field with little in the way of cover, but the field boundary is within a sensible range. The pair stalk along carefully. The doe is still lying down, but Paul reckons the next shot is on. Confidently, he guides Thomas through every stage of the stalk, right up to the shot. facing away to take it in the back of the neck. Thomas felt happy with the shot and the 306 gecko round has done its job perfectly. Well done. I'm taking this home. <laughs> There's one. Great shot Thomas. Thank you very much. Pleasure. The deer really didn't know what hit it. We call in the pickup for easy extraction. Then Thomas is keen to walk over and inspect his first ever Chinese water deer. Well done. Old doe. You feel, feel the back? Poor condition. Good one to take out. Yeah, just, just It's just like me. Yeah, <laughs> time, time of year and uh, yeah. Good shot. With a short but successful start complete, Paul can look back on another well-managed Chinese water deer cull. We're right next to Woburn. Um, a lot of my ground's next to Woburn, so you know it's where they where they originated from. Um, and we, we managed to stock, so you know you've got a, a stock for the following year. Um, certain people, certain farmers, don't like quite so many on the ground, and, and some will tolerate more. So basically, just. Uh, do a guide to what you, you want and, and take out what you need to take out. Weather permitted, you know, what the winter's like, how hard the winter is, the breeding season, uh, vermin on the ground, uh, the predation with, with crows and, and foxes are probably the two main things for Chinese water deer. And also um, sprayers, believe it or not, tractors in, in, in the tram lines run over a lot of fawns. So it depending on what cropping there is, again, it affects on the uh, population. So it's a good shot and um, job done, as they say. Job done, we head back to the larder where both deer are already being processed. It's been a good day's work for Paul and a day to remember for both Bob and Thomas.